Thank you very much, Eamon. Now I'd like, well, I'd like to introduce Rog. <laughs> 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 Mr. Chairman, adjudicators, esteemed colleagues, Charlie. <laughs> it is with deepest pride and utmost pleasure Remember that I'm I second, after you. That I <laughs> and the rest of my team in proposing the motion that a bachelor's life is happier than that of a married man. Now, I'm going to start by addressing some of the falsehoods put forward by the head of the opposition there. Um, although, first of all, I'd like to thank him for saying to support the motion, that was great. Um, but, Eamon has started off, his big thing that he has said so far is that he is contented. Married people are contented. If we're looking for heaven, that's where we are. Now, I can just tell you, if heaven or bliss was a glass of champagne, then my experience of marriage is more like sipping a glass of orange juice that's been sitting by a warm radiator for about three weeks. It was very unpleasant, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know if any of you have met my wife, but she was very, very unpleasant. Her name was Fanny, and thankfully enough, that euphemism also describes what she was like. Um, it is, unfortunately, a very bitter part of my life, and it's one that I'm going to bear for all of you right now, so you can see the sham that the marriage institution is. Eamon says, would he be happy to switch back to being a single man? He's only saying that because he has to go back to his wife. <laughs> if he was single, he wouldn't be saying that at all. He'd be saying, oh yeah, yeah, I'm going to get some curry chips and then I'm going to watch the game when I go home on repeat and not have to put up with a, a book like reading beside him while I'm trying to go to sleep. But Jobs is not here tonight. <laughs> now, as I pointed out, I used to be married. That makes me uniquely qualified that not only have I been married and experienced all of the horrors that go with that, <laughs> but I'm also now currently a bachelor. Paint One could say brush. that because the divorce hasn't gone through yet, I am the happiest married man that you will ever see. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but to talk about just how bad the marriage situation was for me, I literally dropped out of college, costing me one area of bachelorhood, as the definition could go. I moved to France for her, and I generally suffered from it. She was belligerent, a drunk, and very promiscuous. She cheated on me and then left. I was dejected. I, I had a horrible experience. I was an absolute wreck of a man. It completely shook me. I was stranded in the desolate wasteland of France. <laughs> the closest thing I had to an English-speaking friend was the local barman, a lad named Padge who opened a bar and he was from Roscommon. Coincidentally, he was also a, bar a bachelor, owned his own business, and he was probably one of the happiest people I've ever spoken to. Coincidence? I think not. Yeah, who is drunk? <laughs> yeah, the fact that a drunk man is happier than a sober man is no more to the point than anything else. <laughs> anyway, it was during this period of intense self-reflection that I saw a clean hard fact. Most young men today are pressured into marriage by society, and when you think about it, marriage itself is ultimately just a piece of paper. If you're in a good relationship before you're married, and you get married, you will stay in a good relationship. If you're in a bad, mar a bad relationship before you get married, and then you get married, you'll continue to be in a bad relationship. A healthy relationship does not benefit from the piece of paper that says you are legally tied to this person than the actual emotional connection that they see. And look at me, I'm single and I am happier than I've ever been now that I've seen the sheer pointlessness of the old white elephant that is the marriage institution. The pressure to get married has been lifted, leaving me thoroughly to enjoy the happiness brought to me by all of my meaningless conquests and drunken, unhealthy debauchery and curry chips. Stand with me, ladies and gentlemen. Propose this motion. Thank you. Is anybody else uncomfortable in their chairs? <laughs> Can I now call on Charlie as the second speaker for the opposition? Keep it going. Well done, Charlie. That a bachelor's life is happier than a married life. And I look across, and I look again, and I see, what do I see before me? Four young people. <laughs> Martha, opened. Martha, Martha, very young. You're bright, you're beautiful. But you're slightly naive. You're not in no position to tell us, to tell them, what a married man feels like. You are not, I get to you, you're in 
No position. In fact, as I look across... She's a doctor. I'm sure she feels mighty married in married in. <laughs> she, like our other uh, teammates, are in absolutely no position to tell us or tell you how happy a married man can be. They're just not in a position, so they We're cannot, they cannot propose this motion. You're losing straight away. God love you. Now, Raj. Now, Raj, you said you were a unique. And by God, are you unique. But, Raj, you are not a true reflection of a married man in no way, shape or form. Now I feel sorry for you. You went through a raw deal and we're not going to go into the details. You went through a raw deal. But let me say that a married man and marriage is built on long-term relationship that uh, ultimately completed by a marriage. Rog, a marriage is not a piece of paper. A marriage is a union. A marriage is a relationship built up over time. It is not to be rushed into. Rog, you are an example of what rushing in happens. And you are, you are collateral damage to that particular matter. So Rog, you two are in no position to talk about a married man. So that's two down. <laughs> Anthony Alson, I don't know where you are or what you're going to talk about, married man. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I am happily married. Yes. I know, oh. and I know Angie, what wipe the tear away. happiness <laughs> means. I am married to Angie, and yes, I what? do mark the union every year by one extra rose to mark we how many years we have been together. For you, Raj, we were together for 12 years before we got married. <laughs> Listen up and learn. <laughs> so I am a I very happy man. And happen. I made the ultimate, the ultimate declaration on national TV with Miriam <laughs> of my love for my wife. <laughs> ultimate happiness, Raj. Ultimate happiness. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. Here's the rest of it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Marriage is a team, it's a union. And married people are very lucky to have each other. Because, as that song goes, when you're weary, <laughs> feeling low, you need someone there. And lads, bachelors, there's no one there. You need someone back. Now, look at there's so much a blow up doll can do, but it cannot be there. <laughs> someone you need someone to share your life your problems your highs and your lows a bachelor cannot have that ultimate sharing happiness and that side of the house are in no position to tell you or me that they're in no position I'm nearly there yeah. Charlie only have 40 minutes of video there left comes a time ladies and gentlemen there comes a time when you want to leave that bachelorhood, that debauchery, that drunkenness that, you, that drunkenness that you so vividly talked about. And I wish you well in it. But there comes a time, ladies and gentlemen, where you've got to leave that behind you. And you can only drink yourself drunk as many times. Man and woman are meant to be together. The jury is out on the other relationships, on the other unions. I am... Okay. Sorry, okay. Okay. But the jury's out on the other. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my final thing to say is, look at us. <laughs> look at these. Look at this happy find. Look at the lovely Angie. Isn't she beaming? <laughs> we are happy. We. This is real life. We are happy. Please do not run down marriage because you're in no position to do so. Thank you. Yeah.